What stands out for you the most about that time? I mean, from the home games, right through your heads-up battle with Mr. Hashem, quite a ride, wasn't it? It, it, it was. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't until about six months later, and I was sitting in my house, and I sat down and I said, wow, <laughs> I realized the impact of what this tournament was all about. To me, it was like no different than a home game, just a little bit more expensive. And and I'm thinking, holy mackerel, I was that close to winning the World I, I've seen it on TV before and stuff. It didn't matter to me. It was just like another day. It was like a Wednesday or a Thursday. Not a big deal. But then I realized the impact, and of course, poker was so booming back then. And I'm like, wow. And it's funny because three days before the tournament started, and I actually have a book that's cut a, a short version of a book that I'm in the process of doing. It talks about me actually losing half my buy in before the tournament, deciding on whether I was going home or staying. <laughs> for three straight days, they couldn't gamble. Sat by the pool and read the Dan Harrington book for three days and made notes. So that's those notes that you talk about. You see me on television? Those were notes that I made up. Well, well let's, talk about, let's talk about those notes. What, can you remember what they said? I mean, I mean, there's some life lessons in there probably, isn't there? Well, there was. And, and the way what I was thinking about those notes are, I said, okay, look. If you're going to spend $10,000, okay, it's 5000 for me, 5000 for my buddy. If you're going to spend $5,000, you better go have fun because you can spend $5,000 and take a lot of vacations, do a lot of beer drinking, and, and hanging out on the beach and having a lot of fun. So what's the sense of putting up five grand or ten grand if you're not going to have fun doing it, right? Right. So then the second thing is, by right, once you've already bought into the tournament, you have nothing to lose at that point because you're already committed. Okay. Yeah, your money's already in there. You can't get it back unless you win. That's it. You're already committed, so you might as well have fun doing it, and you've got to approach it like a business. And that's the way I approached it, and I, I reviewed those notes, no lie, between every level, every two hours. And um, then I had on there, not calling your raise is a small mistake. When I got to that final table, I tell you, you didn't know how much the money was. You know what the bottom line money was. But you didn't know the numbers in between. And there was only one payout sheet that uh, Johnny Grooms at the time had. I'm like, Johnny, um, can I have a payout sheet? <laughs> I'd be looking at that payout sheet and I'd say, I would find reasons to fold. Right. My whole thing, and it should be a bumper sticker, is fold to the money, baby. I love folding to the money. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not involved, you're not involved. You can't lose chips, right? Right. There was one guy on there about, you know, I don't care about the fame and this and that. I tell you, it was all about the money for me, buddy. So that's why I just kept on folding. I just kept on folding, folding, finding reasons to fold. And then, of course, I couldn't outplay these guys. Mattis out, out um, he, he actually embarrassed me because he bluffed me and showed it. I'm like, you son of a bitch. I you, you're not going to bluff me next time. So I'm going to shove every one of these chips into the center, and you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do. And he knew the right call was, but he lost on the end, and I had to knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, you, you talk about reasons to fold, and I, I like to say I'd rather make a bad fold than a bad call any day of the week. You know what? You find reasons to fold because, you know, here you are, like you said, $5,000 is a lot of money to a guy like you. It's a lot of money to a guy like me. Maybe not to Madison and Helmuth and Ivy, but to the regular Joe it is. And when you get the one chance in your lifetime, all of a sudden you're in a spot where it's life-altering, uh, life-altering jumps, you know. You fold to the money. And they were knocking people out, and I did they. And I mean, I did have to knock two people out, okay. And I did knock out the two best players at the table, which was Andy Black and Mike Mattis now. But as they were knocking each other out, and I'm looking at the sheet, I'm like, ooh, another 200,000. That's three more feet on the boat. Because I was getting a new boat. Right? <laughs> I still haven't gotten a new boat, okay? <laughs> so I kept on saying, all right, that's another 200. Ooh, there's a 300. Ooh, that's a $500,000. Ooh, shit, that's a million dollars. <laughs>
Good luck. You're the better player, and we're going to get this thing over in five hands. And it was six hands before it was done. And, yeah, they were, they were yelling, oi, 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 and all that stuff. But my guys were all yelling, tax man. So if I had won, you'd always be hearing people say, tax man, tax man. So if there was a competition back and forth. There's a chance that they didn't really bother me. They were having fun. You know, the whole idea was, oh, my list is here to have fun. So... Here's this guy all the way across from the other world having fun there, and, and so the chant never really bothered me at all. I never, never even thought about it. I focused it out, you know. I'll tell you, the hardest pro- the biggest problem I had at the final table uh, when I was heading up was two things. One, because the numbers were, were big, and yes, I'm going to cast them, but I had a lot of zeros behind there, okay, so I just couldn't drop the zeros. I had to figure out what was the proper raise. So, and then I could go... Then I kept on forgetting about it. All right, who was the raise I was supposed to do? So I actually screwed up and did not raise enough pre-flop and made a mistake. And that's why I priced him in to play that hand at 7-3. So the whole thing is, you know, it's like a pilot. You could do, you know, there's a thousand things you got to do to, to fly the plane and to get people safe. You miss one thing, just as simple as not hitting the front to put the landing gear down, and people die. Same with your chest. You make one little mistake, and bam, next thing you know, you find yourself with no chips. Walking out the door saying, Jesus, God, I played great all day, and I screwed one thing up.